Would you like to learn how to make a plant-based clam chowder? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you a new ingredient, kelp powder, and how you can make plant-based clams with it. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients, techniques, and show you recipes for your kitchen. So remember to subscribe and also stick around for our weekly giveaway. Today we are showing you how to make a plant-based clam chowder. And I know a lot of people have been asking Scott for seafood recipes that are plant-based. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done the beef and we've done the chicken and, and a lot of cool things. And you can check some of those out in the links in the description below if you haven't seen them. But seafood is, I think, a little bit harder to get that oceany flavor in there. Um, we've been kind of toying with the ideas for a while, but we were finally able to make a really, really good plant-based clam chowder. Yes. What is, I guess, both the challenge of it and also the secret to making it well? Yeah, it's really just finding that flavor, mm -hmm. right? It, there's a lot of uh, ocean-based ingredients that don't necessarily taste like a, a clam or a fish or mm -hmm. anything like that, but we found that this kelp powder, uh, we didn't necessarily have this recipe in mind, but when we tasted it, it brought us right to like a, a clam. So it's very briny, very oceany. It, it, it tastes, you know, uh, pretty much like a little neck clam, so why not go right in that direction and try mm -hmm. to make something that's one of our favorites, uh, you know, being in New England, which is clam chowder, mm -hmm. why not make it completely plant-based? You know, we have the bacon and, and uh, we have the, the barley milk that we can make a creamy soup, so why not, it just kind of led us right to it. So mm -hmm. we found a different way to do it, and it's very simple. You only need a few ingredients, and we can make a plant-based clam within 10 minutes. Okay, well I can't wait to see the demo because I actually think in addition to just the flavor, like one of the hard things is getting that bouncy, yeah. clammy texture, right? Like yes. it's, it's pretty unique to, to a clam. Yes. All right, so I can't wait to see what you're doing to make that clam chowder. So there's a few things that, and over the time we've, we've made this and we figured out what's gonna be the best for it. Uh, so we're gonna take our oat milk that we have. It's just about 100 grams, so not too much. And then we're going to take water. So there's a, a, quite a bit of water in this recipe. So we don't want any really of that oat flavor, but this is gonna help with the color uh, okay. and the consistency. The next thing we're going to add is calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide is a, uh, an alkaline ingredient. Um, it's not like caustic like sodium hydroxide or anything like mm -hmm. that. So you can just mix it in with this. But we need this liquid to be alkaline because the other ingredient we're going to add uh, when it is alkaline, which is just the opposite end of acidic, mm -hmm. uh, it will create a gel, and that's konjac gum. So before I get this blending, basically once I add this konjac gum and it starts to hydrate, the calcium hydroxide has made this alkaline, it will then create a gel. This is how we make like shirataki noodles and stuff like that. Okay. But if we do it, and we do it very slowly, it doesn't pick up any air, so we don't get like uh, a spongy texture. Mm -hmm. And, and that's one thing that we had an issue with. It also gives it a slight oceany f uh, aroma, just naturally when these two combined, mm -hmm. which is good. And then we're going to add our kelp powder as well. So I'm gonna start getting this blending and then uh, you'll see it thicken up very quickly because the uh, konjac gum just thickens so well. So, so get this just going a very low, as low as possible, and then just sprinkle this in. If I were to really whip this, I'm going to get a lot of air. So and I'm it just going to go flying out the blender. <laughs> yeah, I got a top here, if, <laughs> but once this thickens up, I'm not going to need a top. Here, so. Okay. So I'm just going to get that in. And one of the cool things about the kelp powder, because kelp powder is actually a new ingredient for us here um, in our kitchen, is that this kelp powder is actually coming from Maine, and that was really, really exciting because we source. Yep ingredients from all over the country uh but to be at the guest jump thing from where pretty much an hour of where we live is is really really cool yeah. so, go Maine. so you need just a small amount mm -hmm. this has a very oceany briny aroma to it mm -hmm. i can smell it just standing yeah. here so it's not really 
salty, but you just get that, that, that aroma. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt here, not too much. You can already see this starting to thicken up. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sugar because uh, seafood tends to have just a touch of sweetness to yep. it. We don't want it to be super sweet, but we want it to have a little bit of sweetness. There's definitely like an oceany aroma yeah, that's, that's really wafting through the room <laughs> right now. So and it's kind of actually, I would say one other benefit, I'm, I love seaweed, right, is that it's, it is considered a super food. So we don't do a lot of like nutrition based recipes here, but I am excited that this is a way to introduce, you know, more yes. nutrition into your dish. Sure. So th that's a good point. Uh, because this, and so, such a small amount goes into this, but you're also adding, you know, nutrients and whatnot to it. And we can see it's starting to get nice and thick at this point. It's not splashing, anything like that. But here's where we want to stop because we want to get this into a piping bag and I just have a pot of boiling water here. Uh, if I were to go any further, Ooh. try not to splash boiling water all over ourselves. <laughs> if I were to go any further, it's going to thicken up and almost uh, not seize, but set. It'll okay. start to set. So I, I really want to get this going. Uh, there's a few different things. If you were to pipe this, let's say, onto a nonstick mat and spread it out, you can make it look just like a clam. We're not oh. going to do that. We're going to make noodles and then we can cut them up afterwards. So mm -hmm. uh, imagine they're razor clams or something like that. Uh, so you can see that this is very thick now. Yes. Right? Yep. So we can get that out, and if we need to, we may actually need the, the spatula for this. you want me to this. hold that for you nope. or anything? Okay. We're good. So just get some out. We don't have to get it all out. Mm -hmm. Got my water boiling very well. And the second this goes in here, it will completely set into noodles. So hmm. Very simple. And once these come out, I literally just take them and, and slice them up because they're so, so firm. Cool. Okay. So once that goes, it takes a very, very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Actually, it looks really cool if we can see it in the overhead. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Scoop them out and you're ready to go. Okay. Now what we're going to do is allow these to cook really quickly. We'll show you what they look with, like when they're done. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to make a, a clam chowder. So we'll put together the clam chowder. We can come back and taste it. Sounds good. All right. And we're back and the kitchen smells amazing. And <laughs> we are looking forward to finishing up this chowder. But first I wanted to talk about this week's giveaway. So this week's giveaway will be the ingredients that you'll need in order to make the clams at home or you know if you want to make something else with them that will be great as well in order to enter to win just put in the comments below another dish or recipe that you would like to see us make a plant-based version of so it's that easy enter to win all right scott i see you had already started making yes. some stuff what do we have in the pan right now all right so we have onions celery coconut oil our plant-based bacon that i already crisped up so i can just toss it right in there mm -hmm. uh, and then a little bit of flour and thyme salt pepper and a touch of the uh, kelp powder mm. right just to give it a little bit more of that oceany briny yeah. uh, aroma it's so very aromatic in here so, right so now. you can see our, our clams here mm -hmm. right they're little smaller pieces that can be chopped up. They can be whatever shape you want. Uh, if you like them a little bit longer, if you like them a little bit shorter, mm -hmm. that's totally fine. Do with it as you please. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can also like batter these and fry these. These Ooh. will make it like good, um, you know, clam strips or something like that. So that's mm -hmm. another way that you can utilize them. So let's just finish this up. I'm going to add in my potatoes at this point. Just mix those. Those will get cooked as the uh, the chowder cooks. I just don't like to crowd the pan when I'm making my roux. Mm -hmm. Great. And then I'm going to add in our barley cream. And there's water in here as well. So it's like a 50-50 water and barley cream mixture. Yeah. Okay. And I know we used our oat milk in making the clams itself. Um, if somebody just wants to go with one, can they do yeah, like you know, barley yep. milk? Okay. Yeah. So if you wanted to use barley milk for both, you could absolutely do that. Or if you wanted to use oat milk for both, you could absolutely use that. I like the barley milk gets it a little bit creamier. Mm -hmm. uh, there is roux in here, so it's going to be end up you know nice and creamy just like that. And then the last thing we can add is our clams. Mix those in and just let this cook and thicken up and it's going to be wonderful yeah it look it already looks so rich and hearty <laughs> all 
right? So, so if yeah, if you wanted to try it, Janie, we can let's just okay. let this, you know, it'll come up to a boil naturally. It'll thicken. And once those potatoes are done, the, the recipe is done. And as it thickens, you can see, you know, it gets nice and yeah. beautiful so like that. So I don't know if, uh, if the camera can pick it up. So I was trying to look for a little piece of the clam. So you can kind of see this right here is yep. a piece of the clam. And it, it, pr it looks just like a clam. So I'm going to eat it. All right. Yeah, they take on like a slight orangey color. Mm -hmm. That texture is perfect. <laughs> Right, just mm. a, just enough bounce, just just enough chew. Yeah, and because there's so many different aromatics and stuff going on a chowder, and the barley milk it makes it like thick and rich, it really tastes like, like just like a really good chowder. I think you know, yeah, it's 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 very complex. There's mm -hmm. a lot of ocean flavor in here. I love the kelp, how the kelp powder is really coming through, mm -hmm. even though we used a tiny bit of it. Mm. Yes, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a potent ingredient, just, mm -hmm. you know, flavor-wise, so, yeah, it, it makes great, great chowder. <laughs> uh, I love clam chowder, and this is, this is a good one, so. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure there are tons of other uses for kelp powder to make plant-based <laughs> seafood and other things as well, so we can't wait to experiment with it. If you do think of something that you want us to see, see us making with it, leave that in the comments below, too, so you can enter to win multiple ways, because we are excited about kelp powder. Okay, so we're going to finish cooking up this chowder here and until next week from here in the modernist pantry test kitchen i'm janie way and i'm scott garrett